なんで今日こうやってこの部屋の様子をお見せしているかっていうと僕のゲームをプレイされる方ファンの方の多くはちょっとどこか変わった人が多いなっていうふうに僕は感じていてそういう人たちっていうのは世の中のすごくメジャーなエンターテインメントとかメジャーな遊び方とかとは違うところに目を向ける人だなと。I've been thinking about Yoko Taro a lot recently. For some reason, I just can't get that masked man out of my head. He's just intoxicating. I mean, this is a man who cites one of his early inspirations being a story he heard of one of his friends slipping off of a roof and dying. Washing up liquid one. This is a man. I am a man. Who tells his audience, hey, I know you just played through 10 hours of my game, and I wrote the most thought provoking and intriguing last 10 to 15 hours of a game you've ever seen. But guess what, mother bitch? You get to play through that whole beginning sequence again, except this time, it's Galaga. That no bullets are gonna shoot、uh, when the bugs are coming out. Okay. Which is, that's good to know because then you have time to be able to shoot the bugs,、right. get them where you need to be. The key to this game is killing all the bugs as they're coming out, or as many as possible.、Right. And the game still scored amazingly well, and people love it. Everyone already knows why Yoko Taro's writing is so great. He does a wonderful job at, um, subverting expectations. But you subverted expectations. Hi, Rich. <laughs> Because we're subverting expectations. <laughs> subverting expectations. Idiot. Hey, hey, stop it! And creating a really intriguing world with characters, plot, and all the typical shit that makes a good story. Hell, people love the first Nier game. And look at this combat. L- like, c- come on. But the point is, his off the wall storytelling and darker, more philosophical themes carry his games. They connect with people. People love them. But, like, is he okay? Like, as a person, is he okay? He often talks about being old and how drinking helps him write. There's the childhood story I mentioned at the beginning, and of course, there's the um. <laughs> you know, that. I mean, he's a goofy guy, and in interviews, he always seems to be somewhat cheerful and playful. I bet hanging out with him would be a blast. Or awkward and weird. It's definitely one of those two, but I'm not sure which one. So there's this philosophical idea when it comes to humor and depression. Depression? Isn't that just a fancy word for feeling bummed out? Dwight, you ignorant slut! It's the same reason you see people laugh at funerals. We're here today to mourn the loss of our loved one. <laughs> Blessed are. <laughs> ashes to ashes. And dust to dust. <laughs> Faith and A lot of comedians tend to actually be quite depressed once the mic turns off. It's a psych response. We're so sad that our body constructs the exact opposite emotion as a defense mechanism. Yoko Taro's a goofy guy. His explanation for why 2B wears high heels is equally as quirky. He goes on a long explanation on how he imagined an android would look 10,000 years in the future, before admitting that the biggest reason is that he, and I quote, 
I just really like girls. Makes a lot of jokes, talks about being drunk and old, but his actual work tends to be very thought-provoking and serious. Name's Jackass. Nice to meet you. Well, sometimes, you know, there's, there's definitely humor in there too, but... Is he depressed? Well, I don't know him, but he has talked about these concepts before. He actually mentioned finding the event where his friend fell off the roof is horrifying, but also humorous. Some may say that's, that's a little worrisome, but again, it's a defense mechanism. And while I do think that there may be some truth to Mr. Taro, using his silly and goofy persona to mask darker feelings, the more I researched about him, the more I started coming to a different conclusion. He's just a good fucking guy. Now this next part's gonna be a little bit serious, but one interview to me really stood out. He was talking about an experience he had with somebody who told him in confidence that they were in pain and wanted to die. His response was, even so, I at least had the knowledge to understand that saying something as irresponsible as, you can do it, to someone who was really suffering was not a good idea. And so, since I didn't know what else to say, I replied with, I really don't know what to do in situations like this. I don't know what I should say. But if you're really suffering, I think you should get some professional help. He had come to me with a serious problem, and so I tried my best to be careful with the words I used. He goes on to mention that the person did end up taking his own life. The interview started by him talking about how he sees his followers on Twitter saying these same things. I want to die. I'm depressed. Yoko continues on with my personal favorite part of the interview. And yet, seeing these almost strangers write things like, I want to die, living is just suffering, my heart begins to ache. Is it really alright to just leave them alone, I wonder? At the very least, the fact that they follow me on Twitter says that they do know about me. Yes, we're not exactly close, but it's not like we have absolutely nothing to do with each other. I still think the best thing to do is seek professional help, and yet, instead of saying things like that, an answer that is appropriate for strangers, if I were to be asked the same question now, I'd like to answer in my own way, with my own words. I would be sad if you were to pass away. Another thing that stood out to me quite a bit was, on Twitter, Yoko Taro talks about charity. Yes, this is a man who is weird. This is also a man who has lived a life surrounded by themes of depression and death, but this is also a man who cares. And that shows through his writing. And that's why I've been thinking about Yoko Taro a lot recently. <laughs> これ最終回じゃないですか大丈夫ですか緊張するおお。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>